Oh my god. This is happening. This is not a drill. We are doing this. Ciao ragazzi! So what I will do today is to unbox my new brand new iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil and then I will like do a quick comparison on first impression on how it compares to my Wacom Cintiq 13 HD that I've used so far. I guess I will guide you through how to set up your iPad for R. If you like my content, find it useful in any way. If you want to learn art, join our art family and subscribe to this channel. Activate notification if you want to keep up with all the tutorials that I post. Uh, I guess I will post a lot more about uh, Procreate if you're into that. Just, you know, leave a follow. Click on the little bell. So let's get into the video now. So today is my birthday. Yeah. yeah, I feel old. I mean, nowadays YouTubers are starting to be older, but well, okay. I am 30, okay? Fine, I'm, I said that, I am old. But that means that I have money, money to spend. How dare you? I have money to spend on things that I like. I can't even really, you know, go out and with friends and have fun and celebrate my 30th birthday. So I will just do it in the most consumistic way possible. So by buying myself an iPad. <laughs> so here we go. Oh, this is the pack that I got. I ordered my iPad from MediaMark. Oh. Look at this baby. Bam, bam, bam. Bye to this baby. I am literally so excited. Like you have no idea how long I wanted this. This is an iPad Pro 12.9 inches. It has 256 gigabytes of uh, memory. And as, a, as an iPad Pro, it has six gigabytes of RAM. Oh my, there is a little arrow here. Does it mean that I have to Okay, this is smart. Like you just, without using any scissors, you just rip it open. Apple products are really expensive, but I mean, they have a lot of smart things that made your life way easier. This is so small, like compared to the Cintiq that I've been using so far. Oh, uh, this is so, this is so smooth. I would just spend the next three days just filling over this pad. They said that there is a, a ghost button here. That should be. I don't feel it. Well, I guess I will, will see it later when I try to use it. Oh, this also has a little lid here. Opening this package is a bit harder as always, like the iPhones. <laughs> It's a bit bent. I think this, this package has been a bit thrown around. I don't know if you can see here. I hope that the inside is intact. Wow! This is, looks so nice. This is space gray. I got it because it was cheaper than the other one. Let's be honest, I don't care much about how it looks. Here as well, there is a little lid. Open your baby. Peel porn. Yeah. Okay, stay calm. Stay calm. Oh, it's happening. Calm. Everybody oh, stay calm. calm. And then there is the extractions. And then there is the rest of the iPad, the thing to charge. I will change the angle of the camera. I'll see you very, very soon. So here I am. I did set up my iPad already and I have to say a few things. First, it was super easy to set up. Uh, if you have already other Apple products, it will be even easier because you can just put your iPhone or your other iPad next to it and it will transfer everything. Like, well, like I didn't have to insert a Wi-Fi password. I didn't have to put my Apple ID data. I didn't have to do anything about it. It was all like automatic from Apple, which is always super cool and super easy. First of all, Apple Pencil. Let's, let's speak about the pencil itself and compare it to the Wacom Pencil. So far, my first feeling about it is that the pencil is uh, a bit weird to hold as an artist because the weight is at the back part. 
the weight is not distributed you, when you have it in your hand you feel that this part is heavy and that's throw me a bit off because uh, when you have a, a drawing tool either is heavier in the front part or it's just uniform weight and in this case it's a bit weird to feel I could get used to it, it might not be a deal breaker, but let's see how it goes by drawing and what works. This is the Wacom pen and the difference that I feel so far is that the, pen, the Apple pen is way heavier. This is way lighter compared to the Apple pen. And as I said, the weight is in the front part. This is super light and because this, the Wacom pen doesn't need to be recharged, so you can use it directly on the Wacom tablet without having having to charge it. So that's super useful and it's super light, super nice grip. I know there are tools to make get a better grip on the Apple Pencil because it's also super smooth and I will definitely get some of those in the future because the difference is pretty stark and you can hold the pen way better on this one. So another thing that I have uh, to say about the difference is that the Wacom tablet Cintiq 13 HD came already with the support for the tablet. That means that you can already recline your tablet without having to need another support. This one is the one that I have for my laptop and I'm using this right now and I think it works pretty well uh, for a tablet as well. You can have it even almost vertical so I think that would be really useful when I am working. Let's get on to setting up your iPad for artists. So far I didn't have to do anything. The pen already you had to connect it to attach it to charge and it will automatically connect with the Bluetooth. You just have to place your pen on your iPad and it will recognize it immediately and it will connect. I already watched a few tutorials on Procreate on how to use it so <laughs> you are not losing time just watching me just fumbling around with something I've never seen before. So uh, let's get into it. Procreate, price is 11 euros. It's super cheap if you compare it to Photoshop, for example, which is extremely expensive and you have to pay a monthly fee right now. Oh, you can see my face, hey. Eh? Oh, look, there is a Loish drawing. Hello, Loish. Uh, okay, this is what you see as soon as you open the app. There are a few drawings that I suppose are examples. Then, so it's not my stuff. I wish I was as good as Loish and other artists to draw. I will figure out how to delete these things. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was easy. You have to swipe left. I will do that later, I guess. So let's create a new Canva. There are some ready-made Canva sizes. And if you want to create a new personal size, you click on this button here and uh, you will have width, height, DPI, which is dot per inch, which means like with the resolution of your canvas and you will have the maximum layers. As an, an iPad Pro, I have 156 layers, which is a pretty high number compared to other iPads where the, layer, the maximum layers you can have is way way lower so uh we'll set let's say what if what happens if i set 3000 pixels per 3000 pixels okay you can see that the number of layers already drops that's because if you have a bigger canvas there will be a, a smaller number of layers this is usually the dimension that i work with uh, in photoshop so 3000 pixels per, per 3000 uh, per 300 dpi and it seems like the DPI is not affecting the maximum layers at all, so that's a good thing. You can choose the color profile. If you're creating a drawing for the internet, RGB is usually the best profile color you can use. There are time-lapse settings, basically because Procreate, a good thing about it is it will automatically record your work, like while you're working. You can even choose your background color from here, like so the color on your canvas, if you want to color on black, you can choose whatever color you want. And you can even hide your background, which means there will be no background in your drawing. You can always turn it off later just by doing this. These are the tools that you use to draw. There are brush tools, the smudge tool, eraser, the layers, and the color filling tool. Immediately, the thing that I see, there are a lot of brushes. There are other very textured brushes, paint brushes. Wow, there are really a lot. Textures. Oh, wow, okay, there are pre-made, like pre-made textures that you can use. Like there really are a lot of options. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. 
I mean, you can find a, a lot of free brushes for Photoshop around, but the app itself doesn't come with as many free brushes. Um, the, the, let's start with this one. Okay, if you click on it, you can have all the options. You can change all the options to create your preferred brush. A thing that I will make you notice, which is super useful, I think, is Streamline. Streamline with, it will perfect your brush stroke. So if you're drawing a curve, it will perfect it to a make a more precise curve. And this was actually one of the tools uh, that I wanted from Procreate. That is not, there is a smoothing tool in Photoshop, but it doesn't work as well as in Procreate. I will now draw something to test the iPad and then I will come back to you with my first impression and what I think comparing it to the Wacom Synthing 13 HD I've used so far. So this is my creation, my first ever drawing in Procreate. And uh, at first, I have to admit, I wasn't impressed. I was very confused about how the app and how the brushes work. And to be honest, uh, I was a little bit disappointed. But then, like while I was working on it, and I, mm, the more I understood what I was doing, how I, like, I was understanding how the program works and how to be quick at drawing. Like, wow, I have to admit, I am really, really impressed. Like, I have been working for years on Photoshop. Like, Photoshop is not a program made for artists. Adobe says so, Adobe always said so, even if artists always use it for art. This thing, the Procreate, is definitely a tool made for artists. The amazing thing about having an iPad is like the portability of all. Like I draw, I drew this without a keyboard. Like working in Photoshop, I always need a keyboard. Like there is no way for me to draw uh, without using a keyboard because I think it's a really important tool to be quick at your work, in your work. Like you have all the shortcuts, all the tools. And uh, while here, you 
maybe for some things I will need to have uh, some shortcuts to be quicker at selecting, for example, the color. This is a bit the only thing I've been a bit um, less sure about because every time you have to select a color, you have to go on the palette. You have to go on the palette and then selecting colors while I like in Photoshop or maybe having it always open and then you just quick grab it like well that's the only thing so far I uh, had more like a problem with so it might slow down a bit my uh, workflow and also like holy moly like look how much you can zoom look how much control you have on the picture uh, in Photoshop there is no way like at this distance you would see every freaking pixel that you can imagine and it would be impossible to go and refine like little details all around. The control that you have over your work is impressive and how you can easily rotate, zoom in, zoom out, like Procreate, it's really an amazing program. Like really, you can see that it's made for artists. I worked on a Wacom Studio Pro, I think it was called. It's a tablet by Wacom where you also have like the touch uh, feeling and one, it's like super heavy <laughs> and hard to bring around. So if you have to compare the two of them, which I think the Wacom Pro is even way more expensive. I would definitely recommend an iPad because it's way lighter and well, Procreate is way better for touch screens. I have to say that. You have all the shortcuts, you can zoom, rotate like super easy while on Photoshop it's not as optimized for tablets and touch screens. As, uh, another thing I'm impressed about is the brushes. In Photoshop you have way less control, like look at this. Here if you keep the pen vertical, the line it's like how you would expect, like a normal straight line. If you keep your pen laying down, like holy shit, it changes completely like how the pencils behave. And that's pretty crazy because in Photoshop it doesn't definitely do that. Brushes change compared on how you keep your pen. They rotate maybe, it depends, but I never seen brushes do this. I never seen anything in Photoshop do this. Like this is really impressive. Another thing that I have to say it's more in favor of, of the Wacom tablets for me is like the dimension of the tip. If you see the dimension of the pen here is super thin compared to the dimension of an Apple Pencil. I have to say that I do prefer more the Wacom tip because it gives you more precision on putting the stroke. But at the same time, Photoshop has less control over it. Uh, like how much you can zoom in in your drawing. So let's say that the iPad balances that with the possibility that you can go really, really near to your drawing. You can just go zoom in more, basically. Another thing that I like about Procreate that I know is, is how easy it is to make lines regular. If you do this quickly, the brush stroke would be normal. But if you keep it pressed, the program would regularize the brush stroke. Overall, my first impression is really good. Um, about the surface, a lot of artists complain about the surface because it's too uh, smooth, uh, like the standard iPad surface. I think it is a bit too smooth. So I would definitely buy some products, some screen covers that will make my tablet surface a bit rougher one of those matte screen covers, but I don't think it's completely necessary. It depends what you want to use for. If you right now don't have the budget for one good screen protector, I think the tablet is usable as it is. I would probably though buy something to add more weight in the front of my Apple Pen and more grip to it because that's the main issue I'm having so far that this pen weight is all in the back and it's a bit unbalancing when I am drawing. Overall, do I recommend this product? Yes. 
I do, but also depends what is your goal. So if you're a young artist and you are trying to decide if you want to buy an Apple Pen, an iPad or a Wacom tablet and a PC, it depends what your goal is. If your goal is to go into the art industry and become a professional artist that work in a studio, you need to know Photoshop. That's the industry standard. Everywhere you go and you apply to companies, they 90% ask you for Photoshop. So you definitely need to know how to use it and you definitely need to know how to be quick at it. I mean, you can still use an iPad, but I would recommend to have a keyboard because Photoshop without a keyboard is basically useless. If you instead want to become a YouTube artist, like an artist that works through social media, more like influencer kind of, let's say. I don't like the word, but that to a one can understand what I'm talking about. I would say an iPad is the right choice because look how cool, how good it looks on camera. Like, oh my God, like I recorded myself on my Wacom tablet and there is no comparison on how good this looks on camera compared to another screen tablet. If you're just a beginner artist and you don't even know if you like to draw digital, this is a bit expensive. It's a bit a huge investment and I would recommend to start from something smaller if you already have a PC. If you already have an iPad, then I guess if like if your family, your dad or whatever already have an iPad, then I guess just buy an Apple Pen and use that one. But if you have to buy one, instead of buying a cheaper computer and the tablet without the screen, very beginner, I would recommend definitely the cheaper option because you don't even know if you like it. I also started without drawing digitally without screen. It's way different. It's a bit harder in my opinion, but I think for a beginner, that's uh, way better. Unless you're rich, then buy whatever you want. Okay. <laughs>So that was it for this video and I really hope you enjoy it. I really hope you find it useful and I hope this helped you on your quest of finding the perfect art tool. I hope it also gives you a bit more clarity if to buy or not an iPad and uh, how to set it up for art. Thank you for watching so far. Uh, this is incredible. I am still a learning YouTuber and I really hope you enjoy my content. So if you do so, please leave a like and subscribe. It means the world to me. And thank you to all the subscribers that I have so far. Like you guys have been amazing. My channel has grown a lot in the last months. Thank you to YouTube Shorts. Uh, but I really hope you enjoy also my long content. So bye for now.